What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Out of the Shadows. I have two very special guests who you've seen me do individual episodes with, my brother Tulio and my very good friend Mike. Say hello to the people, guys. What's up? What's going on? What's up? All right, so as I've, as I've said before with these episodes, you know, my intention is for it to be a good source of entertainment. I think having a conversational type back and forth or more of a roundtable discussion this time is more entertaining to all of us. We're all stuck in the house. We need, you know, time to distract ourselves, but also expand our minds. And I've known both these guys just about my entire life and they have fantastic opinions and I, I learn a lot from them. So today we're going to start with kind of a broad topic. You know, I'm constantly talking about the Wim Hof method. And if you guys don't know who Wim Hof is, please check it out. I'm going to put a link in the description below of my own personal videos on him. The method consists of a deep breathing method and cold water exposure. And the third pillar that he talks about is the setting of the mind, essentially your mindset specifically for this activity. And I think while it sounds like the simplest form or aspect of it in that, you know, getting your mindset going isn't necessarily a very active thing. I think it's probably the hardest part of the whole process in that, it's very easy to do something mechanically. It's very easy to have an exercise that you just tell yourself, well, I have to do this. And even if you're struggling, you're just like, well, this is what it is. So I know in my experience, being able to change my mindset to a more positive place and aimed at more positive goals and believing myself was a, was a long process of change. So I wanted to start off. Um, I'll ask you guys first and then I'll weigh in. So Tulio, how would you say throughout your life, how has your mindset developed? Oh, uh, God, I don't know. Um, it's kind of tough to say. I know I try to always and kind of always have tried to um, just figure out a positive spin on like whatever's happening or at least a way out. You know, um, kind of like, uh, you know, we were saying last time I was uh, on this with you, Matt, you know, like that um, even, you know, like this, this uh, worldwide pandemic thing and everybody being on lockdown, you know, like it sucks and it's scary, but I know we're going to come out on the other end one way or another. And, um, you know, it ultimately long term things will be better. Uh, and it's kind of how I try to sort of look at things all the time. You know, I try to see things as a opportunity or a challenge as opposed to uh, end all be all. Um, no matter what it is, you know what I mean? If it's something good, obviously, then I'm, I try to be grateful for that opportunity in that moment. If it's something negative or scary, then I try to still try to like stay calm and figure out how it can be an opportunity or, um, you know, how we'll just get through it and, you know, the challenge of it or whatever, you know, um, I heard, I can't remember who said it and it wasn't actually too long ago. I heard or read somewhere, somebody had said that, um, pain was inevitable, but suffering was an option. Yes. Super, and, super famous quote. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's kind of how I try to sort of look at things always, you know, like, uh, like I said, if things are going good, just kind of be appreciative of it. Um, take full advantage of the good. Uh, and also, like I said, appreciate it, you know, like knowing that it's not going to last forever. And, uh, you know, when things are bad or seem like they're a shitty opportunity or time to try to figure out, how it could ultimately be positive or just, you know, instead of dwelling on the negativity of it, just go, okay, this is what's happening. How are we going to get through it? No, and I totally agree. And I think, you know, you bring up a point that is very similar to how I've worked to change my mindset. And I think it's, again, it sounds simple when you say it, but being able to view a problem as a challenge, as opposed to a detriment. And that's, you know, not the easiest thing to do. And I'll get into that more 
in my own personal life when I, when we get to me. Um, so Mike, what, what do you think? Like, what's, what's your mindset in general? Do you feel like it's evolved as you've gotten older? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I was, I mean, I, I probably borrow a little bit from what TJ was saying, but, um, but yeah, um, I, uh, I think, you know, having a sense of calm is definitely important. Um, anybody that knows me knows I'm pretty laid back anyway. So, but, um, I think, you know, there's a saying, you know, you can't calm the storm, but you can always calm yourself. Um, that is important because sometimes when things are getting thrown at you, you know, it's, it can be easy to, to uh, panic and sometimes, you know, feel like you don't have control. But uh, I think just to kind of remind yourself and to think, um, to try and find that little bit of inner peace inside yourself, you know what I mean? Um, but I think that's, that's good situationally and, you know, just overall is very good too. You know, maybe to, sometimes when you have like objectives laid out though, if you're laid back like me, sometimes, you know, if you don't have that sense of urgency, to do, um, to go on with your objectives, that could be, uh, being too laid back isn't always good, but, um, no, I think, I think it's, it's important just to always kind of, um, take a minute to pause and really view the situation, you know, and, and, uh, assess things and don't, you know, try not to freak out. Right. No. And, uh, I agree with that as well. And, so I'll get into my thoughts on it. And then obviously, you know, feel free to give feedback as well, you know, both of you and, you know, interject your own thoughts. So for me, I think the challenge I can say with being someone who's been formally diagnosed as having depression, who's struggled with depression on a regular and long-term basis, you know, one of the basic tenets is that you have these negative thoughts constantly in your head. You tend to not believe that you're capable of just about anything. It's, you know, you put yourself on such a, such a low pedestal if such a thing exists. And it was very difficult for me to start to realize that I am capable of doing things and I am capable of overcoming adversity. And initially, at least if we want to break this down into some kind of step-by-step -step process, the thing that I had to do was fall back on logic. And I talk about this in a lot of my videos. Logically speaking, if you try, you open the possibility of succeeding. If you don't try, you're guaranteed to stay where you are. So it's a very radical shift and it certainly didn't happen overnight. I mean, honestly, I would say this took a number of years, but I would get hit with something new, whether it was a recurrence of depression or just something in everyday life and be like, oh man, like, how am I going to handle this? These things keep happening. What am I going to do? Versus now I've been able to develop the mindset, you know, like you both had said of, all right, well, let's stay calm. Let's address this the best we can. And there are even times to where I will view it as a challenge, you know, in terms of, um, you know, some of my viewers are aware that I work with dogs and I've only been doing it for a little less than a year. And a lot of times if an opportunity arose where it gave me a chance to prove myself as opposed to feeling inadequate and being like, oh my God, everyone here has done this so much longer than me. I've been able to get to the mindset of, I'm about to show you what I got, man. And you're, five years is not is going to be nothing compared to my one which is sounds a bit arrogant but i think uh sometimes that that mindset can be a very useful tool yeah so um well the other thing i can say we've all at least dabbled um in martial arts um you know i can certainly say i feel like that really helped develop my mindset especially in the regard that for me, if I was struggling with some particular technique, I had to very much learn to not beat myself up and not tell myself how I, I wasn't succeeding and I couldn't do it or I should be able to do this because I know so much about this, at least from a theoretical standpoint. And as much as it was a challenge, it has really forced me and it's been very helpful in the fact that if I'm having trouble doing something, I tell myself when I start beating myself up, I'm, I literally, I'm just like, all right, stop you're not supposed to be good at this because you've never done it and listen. And I take it as an opportunity to learn and grow as opposed to sitting there beating myself up and now ruining the entire session that I'm going through. 
how do you, would you, I know that you've been doing jujitsu consistently, Tulio, for the last, what, five years now? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, like six, really, except for, you know, like a little bit of time off here and there for like, you know, minor injuries or whatever. Uh, Yeah, pretty much six years. Um, Yeah, and you know, uh, jujitsu especially, I think, is great at that because uh, what, I've learned and what I tell new people is uh, nothing works the first thousand times you do it because it's pretty much sort of how jujitsu is. Cause there's so many little like tiny details. Like I can show you exactly how to finish a rear naked choke, but to get to the point of having it locked in perfectly is really hard. You know, in the first thousand times you try to do it when somebody's fighting against it, you probably won't be able to get it you know, or you don't even have, it might take a thousand times of doing it before you can develop the, the squeeze strength to pull it off if it's not imperfect. And to get to the setup to get there is really difficult. And it takes a th- you know, millions of times of doing something before it feels natural and you can do it. And um, the other thing too, jujitsu is great because you can, you know, like when we roll, we call it, you know, like sparring, um, the training when you're going, you're not trying to hurt or kill each other, literally, you know, but you're still going at it hard. So you feel actual pressure on yourself and you have to learn. Um, God, man, I remember when I first started training, if I had somebody, especially like the uh, upper belts or bigger, with you know, almost everybody's bigger, you know, I, I don't really weigh very much. Um, you know, I mean, I usually give up at least like 20 pounds. Um, you know, so I mean, if I'm going with somebody that weighs, you know, like 200 pounds, I'm giving up, you know, 50 pounds on them um they'd have me an amount or side control i would just you're like can't move and i in the beginning i had to work on just fighting off a panic attack because that's what it was like you know what i mean you almost get claustrophobic under somebody's weight when you try to move two or three or four different ways it's like you naturally think you should do uh and it doesn't work at all you feel like you're being crushed under a house or there's a truck parked on you you know, and uh, it's scary. It's like legitimately scary. And it's uh, great. That's why it's great training because your body literally thinks you're, you're being murdered. You know, so you have to train your brain to remind yourself that that's not what's happening. You know, the guy that's on top of me that may, it feels like he's literally killing me is not. He's helping me. He's not going to actually hurt me or let me get injured. You know, if anything really bad happens, it's going to be 100% an accident. You know, um, and uh, that's the other great thing about it is that it's uh, it it really you there's a great level of trust with your training partners in jujitsu also because you know when you tap to a choke if that guy doesn't let go you will pass out and if he keeps going you will die uh, you know so I mean you're like literally putting your life in you know other people's um, hands when you're training with them you know if somebody gets you. And uh, any type of like joint manipulation, you know, whether it's an arm bar or Kimura or whatever, if they yank it, if they yank and crank it, your arm will snap, you know, so you got to trust that, you know, the other guy's not going to do it to you. So you in turn don't do it to your training partners. And um, it's a great way to, like I said, it's sort of like a, a, a trust exercise, you know, because especially if you're new or you're visiting somewhere or somebody's visiting your gym, uh, you know, you're going with complete strangers, even when you compete you know, like you're going at it a little bit harder, but you're still, it's sort of like an unspoken mutual understanding. We're here to compete and I want to beat you and you want to beat me, but neither one of us wants to see the other guy, you know, they have to have a medic call to the man. Right. <clears throat> you know, so I think it's a good, uh, it's a, I don't know if there's a better exercise or practice for dealing with, um, actual like pressure it teaches you to handle stress physically and mentally really really well and um then you can kind of like apply it to almost everything in life you know uh like i was explaining to you uh uh uh, both of you you know what i mean you guys are can both play the guitar really well when you first picked it up you couldn't you know what i mean or if you could you you know maybe kind of could compared to if i just picked one up But you know what I mean? No matter, I I don't think anybody, I don't think, you know, Slash or Jimi Hendrix picked the guitar up and was able to play a song the first day. 
You know what I mean? Like you do things, it doesn't work. You feel uncoordinated. It's sloppy. You're like, Oh my God, this, how, do, how does anybody do this? And you just slowly work at it and work at it. And then there's just progress that comes and things that seem impossible. Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, Mike, your, your solos are just amazing. Absolutely amazing. You know what I mean? Like, man, your bass solos are amazing too. You know what I mean? Like both of you guys, you can do ridiculously good things. You know, I remember how excited you were, Matt, when you were able to learn that, uh, that little bit that Flea played, you know, like to a normal person, whether you've ever played, I don't ever have to, I've never picked up a bass, but I see what Mm -hmm. Flea does and go, holy shit, that is like, it seems almost humanly impossible or like there's a handful of people in the world that could ever do that. Oh yeah. That's a good example too, because literally I got to the point where I could get through it, but especially like you say, his skill level, I don't think I ever played it to perfection. Yeah. But right. But, but I mean, you were still able to dedication, if you say, and building mm-hmm. upon it. It wasn't like I picked it up, looked at the screen. It was like, okay. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, I mean, that it doesn't like for me, it's um, um, jujitsu. And I, I think that everybody has something that they do that if you've just been doing it long enough, you're good at it or you can figure out how to do it. You at least have the confidence, you know, even if it's cooking, you know, like nobody just cooked great right off the bat, you know, but the more you do it, the more you like expand the things that you're able to do. And then something that seems like, uh, you know, at one point in time would have been an overwhelming, impossible task. You slowly start to build the confidence of, okay, I don't know how to do it, but I'll figure out how to do it. You know, I think um, a, a great way of putting it to, I can't remember who I heard say it, is that you should never say I can't, but you, it's okay to say I can't today. Right. Because that's the truth. You know, there's a lot of things you can't do today, but there's nothing that you can't do. Right. And I, I like think, that. you know, uh, it's the interesting thing too. Anyone who's good at anything, when you watch them, they make it look so effortless and so easy. And then you try to do what might be a very basic technique and no matter what we're talking about, martial arts, music, cooking, carpentry, whatever, you know, the, the first time, and I can attest to this, I'm far from a handyman. The first time you swing a hammer just to put a nail in, it's like, well, looks like someone gave a three-year-old a hammer on that one. That was pretty, that was pretty embarrassing. (laughs) So I'm like, uh... what would you say? In terms of martial arts or music or, you know, whatever, how do you feel your skills have developed and some of the challenges you faced and had to overcome? Yeah, um, I, uh, I could talk a little bit about, you know, jiu-jitsu because, I, I mean, obviously I'm not. Um, well, you've boxed as well, though, I know. Well, yeah, but not like, not amateur, special, just more like uh, in sparring and in the gym type of stuff. But, um, yeah, I was going to bring both of those things up, actually. Uh, you know, jujitsu. I, I don't have the pedigree of of TJ, and I don't. Well, you know, yeah, I please. Uh, <laughs> nobody get the impression that I'm good. Okay, just because I've been doing it for a long time doesn't mean I'm good. <laughs> Still a blue belt. I got to uh, work you, really hard at stuff. I'm good at. I'm halfway decent at a couple yeah. things, but. <laughs> but but you're actively good. doing it. You actively do yeah. it, and, and I would definitely say. Still, you know? I would definitely say that you're you're good. I mean, none of us sitting yes. here are yeah. you know at the top <laughs> at the top of any of our fields. I would never say that. Oh, he's right. not good. Like, but yes, go on. Sorry. Yeah. So you know, TJ, you kind of said about trust, like the trust factor. And that is definitely, I mean, anytime you're, you're doing a martial art or if it's boxing, whatever, you know, trusting the people that are around you is huge, you know? And I found it in jujitsu when I did train for briefly, um, the, the, the support is, is a big thing. And I felt like 99% of the people in the, in the gym were supportive and they're trying to help you out. They're trying to, to, uh, even if it, even if they're, beating you up in some way not badly obviously but it's it's to help you out you know what I mean and they don't do it to a point to embarrass you it's never about that it's, it's trying to help you out and you know on the flip side I've been in some you know for one example from the boxing gym um, and anybody who's been to a real boxing gym a real boxing gym not like a chain one or whatever um, some of the guys in there are just looking for sparring partners and you could be a guy who's working on your own thing and then somebody will come up to you, hey you want to spar real quick and my advice would be to, you know, unless you know what you're doing, probably, you know, 
make sure you know the person, you know what I mean? Make sure you're, you, you know who that person is. But in my case, one time I did uh, spar with, with a guy and he beat the shit out of me, you know what I mean? For, for two rounds. And the person that uh, had, had kind of intervened a little bit was saying like, you know, you should work on offense, me, the other person should work on their defense because he was an amateur boxer. He had seven or eight fights in the ring. I didn't know that, you know what I mean? But the guy didn't work on his defense only. He worked on beating the shit out of me. So I was, I was uh, pretty bloody and, and, you know, somebody just kind of stopped it. I was like, okay, this is, this is done, you know? And um, in, in that case, it could have been discouraging. And I think a lot of people can be discouraged when, when you have somebody that's taking advantage or, or is just looking to use you as a um, punching bag. But uh, I didn't have that experience in jujitsu as much. I felt like it was very, uh, very um, helpful. People wanted to help you out. They might choke you out or whatever, but they're going to they're gonna kind of break down what maybe you did wrong or what they did right. And that's true in, in boxing too. I've had a lot of helpful people that just want to show you what to do. So when you're learning something, um, having good people around you is huge. And I think for the most part, overwhelmingly, uh, most gyms stress that, you know, um, musically, I, I uh, it's crazy because, you know, I, I, we used to play when we were younger and even personally at home, I mean, I've been playing a little bit more recently, but there's been a long stretch where I kind of stopped playing. And when I was younger, it was like every day, it was like clockwork. I played for hours at a time and really slowing things down. If I wanted to learn a song or whatever it was, um, slowing things down and taking your time was, was how I kind of progressed. I mean, you, you can't, with anything in life, I think you can't just tackle something on full speed. You have to, you have to be able to um, slow things down and, and uh, repeat as many times as necessary, you know? So, um, I don't know if I got off track. Uh, by the way, if you do hear any banging going on, that's brickwork being done on the building. So I forgot to mention that. But um, but yeah, but I, just you know, trust trusting people um, is always going to go. You know, with your whatever you're learning, if it's a team sport, whatever it is, is always going to go further. Um, and just to remember to be able to slow things down and not try to go full speed when you're learning is a uh, is a big help. No, I think that's, those are all really good points, especially like you say, in terms of uh, slowing things down, like anytime I've had the opportunity to teach anyone, whether it's, you know, music or martial arts, I was, I would always stress, I want you to be precise before I want you to worry about speed or in the case of, uh, you know, that's specifically more with music only. Um, with martial arts, it was both. I was like, I want precision before I want speed and power. That's going to come from your precision. And, you know, the other end of that with, you know, you talking about your experience in, in boxing, you know, that's, it's like you said, you need to be surrounded with the right people. And unfortunately in, in everything, it doesn't have to just be martial arts, but I think it can be a little bit more, especially with us being males people's egos get in the way they want to show you how tough they are. And if those are the kind of people that you're with, you're less likely to continue whatever it is that you're doing. Um, I very much would advocate for anyone who is struggling with a mental health issue to find a martial art or really any, um, any, any hobby, anything you're passionate about, but martial arts in particular, I do think are very good at building focus and self-discipline and like you say you're you're forced to slow down and develop a technique i do think it's it comes down to the individual in terms of what style you would like to pursue jujitsu is phenomenal i haven't done much i've i've gone with tulio before and i've gotten my ass kicked pretty hard and i can speak from experience size has nothing to do with it like i probably nothing. outweigh i probably outweigh my brother by a solid like legitimately 60 pounds or better and didn't it, it it completely doesn't matter but it's very good for the person it shows you that technique is what's ultimately important and again you're with people who you trust who you know are going to be helpful and they help you develop your technique at any good school again no matter what it is people should be trying to help you not not show you up and make you think like less of yourself that's gonna that's gonna stop you from pursuing it that's gonna make you feel worse 
that's the complete opposite of what I feel any kind of passionate pursuit should do. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people could get turned off by that. And, and then even, you know, there are some that you could try to help people too, and they might just not like to get um, beat up or showed up either. You know what I mean? And, and you're actually trying to help them. And sometimes their ego, it, it can happen both ways. You know what I mean? Somebody is trying to show up. That's their ego. But, and, and also somebody that you're trying to help that doesn't like to get, you know, shown up, their ego could come in and, and it, it, it's not good. You know what I mean? You have to be able to, to put that down sometimes and just allow uh, the trust to come in and, and it'll help in the long run. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, and it, um, the thing too, uh, that's another like nice benefit of um, 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 jujitsu is that it's, you know, uh, like you said, man, size and doesn't matter in the beginning. If you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing. And it's not possible to beat somebody who has more knowledge than you, um, irregardless of size. So it's nice because it's very humbling. So that's also why I think, you know, like you said, Mike, you, when you went to the uh, jujitsu, the guys are more, they're more helpful, you know, they're nicer, they're uh, beating you up, but it's not to the point, like I said, of actually hurting or injuring you. You know what I mean? Like you're hurt, but you're yes. hurt. Like you're just your muscles are sore. Your body's not used to it kind of beat up than like actual, like, you know, being injured type hurt. Right. Um, they're not inflicting the hurt on you really. And um uh, mm. I've heard some people, cause you know, uh, some of the guys that I train with also, uh, fight, you know, so they go to like, yeah. you know, kickboxing classes and boxing and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the difference that, you know, from what I hear is that like with striking, if you're a big guy and especially when you start, no matter what size you are, your first few times there, you're not, you're not going with somebody. You're being taught how to hit the bag. You're hitting the bag. You're hitting mitts. You feel good. You feel strong. You're like, Oh, you know, mm -hmm. guy can kill anybody. Yep. You go to jujitsu for the first, God, you know, it varies person to person, but for the first while you're going, I can't do anything. I'm helpless. Right. Yeah. You know, so it, yep. it's humbling and people remember what it feels like. So people are a little bit more, um, like you said, helpful with it in a mm -hmm. way. And then, you know, like you were saying, man, too, as far as uh, the benefit of, uh, you know, for like um, people with any type of issues, you know what I mean? Whether it's like uh issue to the point of like actually having to, you know, be, um, you know, have uh, prescriptions or go to doctors or whatever, you know, like if you're just like uh, introvert and you're shy, I know it'd be really, really hard to go and actually start. But <clears throat> jujitsu is great because I mean, first off, a, a, a lot of the people there uh, are kind of like that. Uh, one of the um, very famous coaches, uh, Eddie Bravo, he's the head of uh, 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, which is a whole style of his own. He calls his uh, his students uh, army of nerd assassins <laughs> because it's kind of like what it is. You know what I mean? He said some of the, like the, the toughest, literally the deadliest people that he knows, you would never suspect it looking at them. You know what I mean? They're not mm -hmm. physically intimidating looking. They're the nicest people that you know. You know, uh, one, of, dude, one of the uh, toughest guys that I know in, is ridiculously nice. He's uh, super funny. He's got a bunch of tattoos. So, you know, I mean, like maybe, you know, you wouldn't, if you saw him with his neck tattoos, you wouldn't like yeah. think he's, uh, you know, Visually, like, you might be like, all right. Yeah. But he also, he has a Ninja Turtles backpack <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like he's not like a scary, intimidating acting type of person at all, you know? And um, so I think too, that it's, it's really beneficial because it's a uh, great, it's nice and it's calming to walk into a room and like know you could probably choke everybody or anybody in that room. Right. If you, yep. can, <laughs> you know, and I mean like striking's great, but, uh, and it can give you that, you know, like to a degree, but, um, you know, if you're my size, you know what I mean? I weigh like 145 pounds it, no matter how, much I train Muay Thai or boxing or any other style, you know, if I got in a fist fight with somebody that weighed 220, there's a pretty good chance it would not be able to knock them out. You know what I mean? Right. Even if they're completely untrained, but if somebody that weigh is 220, um, you know, grab me or try to start a fist fight with me because it wouldn't try to hit them. I can grab them and I can control them. Uh, and you know what I mean? Like, uh, 
you know, too, Mike, from experience, even if you're bigger, you know, yeah. both of you guys, just from the little bit, you know, like even bigger and stronger, if a smaller guy can just hold you down, you get frustrated and exhausted, you know, and oh, yeah. um, like I said, like when you train jujitsu, you can walk into a room and kind of have that confidence, you know what I mean? That you don't necessarily need to, or to be able to, or to uh, knock somebody out. But you know what I mean? Like right. if you can go in and go, I can be okay. I can hold anybody down if I need to, you know what I mean? It gives you a nice little yeah. kind of like boost of confidence. Yeah. And um, like I said, it, it's humbling the people that are there are humble. And uh, you know, we've, we've had people that come in that, you know, are like big, bigger, they work out, you know, or, you know, they have like, they look like a tough guy. Maybe they've done some striking and they'll come in and then right away, you know, like you said, the, the ego part of them wants to like talk about what they've done before or the street fights they've gotten in or the boxing yeah. that they've done. And we'll, we'll always just let them talk. But as soon as they leave, we just kind of laugh and we're like, dude, if you want to be tough, be here in three months. Yeah. You know, like that's how you like earn respect over there is not by acting tough or trying to do tough guy things. Cause that, those are the people that actually walk in and end up being hurt because they're acting goofy and they're trying to hurt the other people that aren't experienced, right. you right. know? So then you have to, we put the upper belts on them to kind of teach them to be humble. Exactly. You know, exactly. there's another saying that I really like that's uh, either be hum or you. Uh, oh my God. I can't remember it now. Oh my God. Be humble or be humbled. That's yes, that's what I was, yeah, that's what yeah, I was yeah. thinking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, right wanted, there. I wanted to, inter to interject real quick. Um, yeah, no, and a couple of things. One, for anyone out there who, like I, you know, I'm saying, if you are one of my viewers who struggles with mental health issues, which I'd imagine the majority of my viewers probably do on some level, you know, it's it's hard. I can say from experience, I was not only, not only have I struggled with depression, but I've struggled largely with social anxiety and being in social situations where I don't know anyone, especially is in the past has been super difficult. Even now I, uh, there are times I have to, you know, kind of remind myself of certain things, but the way I would go about it, if you're thinking about getting into a martial art or really any, anything like that would be to, just tell yourself, you know, I really want to do this. I'm really excited to do this. It's going to be fun, but I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. You're going to be terrified. Like the first school I ever went to with uh, Wing Chun Kung Fu is what I study. It was Bruce Lee's first style. And it's, it's, it's my favorite, not the easiest thing to find great teachers. So if you do pursue that, be careful, message me anyway. Um, but the first school I went to, uh, the person who ran it would interview you before he would take you on as a student. And at the time I was, I was going through pretty heavy depression. My social anxiety was pretty bad. And I was so worried the entire day at work about going to this interview that I literally, I switched from really focusing on getting into the school to just, I'm like, I am so nervous and terrified right now. I need to just get to this interview. I don't care if I join or not. I want to get through this interview. So sometimes if you're having those difficulties, break it down into smaller levels. And I can say again, from experience, the, that school I did spend a little bit of time at because the teacher was a really cool guy, but there were at least a solid three attempts on my own before I landed with my teacher and was able to be in a social setting to where I wasn't bothered and I was having a really good time and I was able to kind of get out of my head. So if, if someone out there watching this tries no matter what and say you go to a group and you get nervous and it's too much, don't beat yourself up. Just, you know, it was an experience and give yourself credit for just showing up. And I think that applies to so many things in life. Like, you know, Mike, you were talking about, and I, t I told you this when you, uh, cause you spoke to me not long after it had happened when you went to the gym and you'd had the guy who was yeah. sparring with you and you know, was a unbelievable, was a jerk. About it. <laughs> Oh yeah. My point immediately to you was I was like, well, I wouldn't feel bad at all because you, he has so much more experience. One, he was clearly not being, not showing any kind of character, but the simple fact that you right. got in there and you didn't need, it wasn't like, you know, and even if you had, it wouldn't have been, you know, a bad thing, but it wasn't like you went in there for a few minutes and were like, no, 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 I'm done. You went and you stood and you, you went through it and it didn't. And again, I, I stress this so many times in all my videos. Winning to me isn't about whose hand is raised at the end of the day. It's about you went through it. You endured it. You went through a scary situation 
and you did it. And I think that's really important to anything in life. Um, just as a side note, I know we're primarily talking about jujitsu and I do think that the benefits of grappling are huge. You know, like you say, you can take out someone who's much bigger than you in my style. I, one guy explained it really well. And I do feel that there's a lot of this in some ways it's, there are almost standing grappling elements and not like when you see someone, you know, in karate or whatever, who ends up grabbing a guy's arm and, you know, getting him in an arm bar, you get close enough to where they're forced to make contact with you and then you're able to manipulate them. And then in terms of the striking, even my teacher who is, he's not the biggest guy, but I know like he's strong. Then it's a matter of striking surgically and aiming for vulnerable spots. So you know, I think, uh, in my opinion, again, and you don't, and you, if you are thinking about martial arts, you don't have to go somewhere that's, even if you joined it just for the sake of the art and you weren't looking to spar, you know, that's fine. And I think there's, there's validity to any art and, you know, follow what you love, follow your passion. Don't, it's not about us sitting here and, you know, I don't want someone to get the impression because again, struggling with kind of your own self-confidence when you, when you, you've dealt with some of these things like depression or anxiety. I don't want someone to watch this video and think, all right, well, these guys say that jujitsu and maybe Wing Chun are the only ways. And what I'm thinking about is stupid. So forget about that. Follow the things that you love. And uh, you know, when I, when I preach individualism, I mean it in the truest sense. I don't mean to be an individual and follow what I do. Absolutely. And you know, I think another thing too is, um, even like a, a, a great thing for everybody, just the benefits of just uh, exercise, but especially for people if you're dealing with any kind of issues. Because I, I heard somebody, I think it was Tate Fletcher on a podcast. Um, I could be wrong. It, it, it doesn't matter. But the, the point is that they said that uh, if you start taking care of yourself in any way, you're um, sort of like showing and reminding yourself that you're worthy of it. And, you know, like it's always the first step to being like a good, healthy person, not only physically, but mostly mentally is to just take care of yourself, you know? So, I mean, whether that's, uh, you know, like, I mean, you could do something as simple as just like, you know, a few push ups or, you know, crunches or whatever, you know, like any, any type of thing to like kind of start just physically taking care of yourself, I think is really good for, um, overall, just like developing as a person. And, you know, it'll, it'll give you a little bit more confidence because if you care enough to take care of yourself, then you're reminding yourself that you're worthy of it. You know, and the first step is always like just, you know, self-respect and self-love, you know? So, I mean, whether that's just, you know, I mean, it could be something as simple as, um, you know, because uh, anything I always say, you have to ease into it. You know, I mean, you have to ease into yeah. it. If you're, you're going to start working out for the first time ever, if you want to start, if you want to eat healthy, I don't think any, you can't go full blown, you know, people that say, Oh, I can't eat like that. You know, like it's a possible eat healthy. It's because they're going from eating horribly to try and eat a hundred percent clean. And then it's a shock to your system. It throws all your habits off. You know, like it seems overwhelming, you know, and working out, I think of it as working out, you know, like if you don't work out, if you're not in shape, you know, you can't get up off the couch and do like an hour long, really intense workout, you know, as somebody that's been working out for years could, so, you know, if you're going to look at, I think people should look at like diet the same way and anything, especially, I think that that's a really easy way for people uh, who are having, you know, maybe some like uh, self-esteem issues or just, you know, self-respect or whatever. If you slowly, if you do something one step at a time to take care of yourself and respect yourself, that you'll uh, almost accidentally start to feel better. You know, because even if it's just on like a subconscious level, you're telling yourself by taking care of yourself, you're telling yourself that you're worthy of it. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, I had posted on my Instagram not long ago, and this was actually, I had thought of this because of a conversation that you and I had had, Tulio, was, um, you know, changing what you think is possible is a large undertaking. It doesn't happen overnight. And I think the only way to do it is by taking small steps each day and then all of a sudden like you say by accident almost it seems like now what you thought was impossible is suddenly possible and to go even more into your point about the small steps you know i can again from personal experience and i, and I try to emphasize this as much as i can in all these videos 
don't worry about taking a major step. I mean, like I've been to the place too, where literally all you want to do is just lay down. Some people have trouble getting out of bed. For me, it was, uh, I would get out of bed, but then I'd go straight and lay down on the couch just about all day. Literally my very, one of the very first things I did in one of my early major depressions was, all right, I'm letting myself lay down for the first three hours that I wake up. But after that, I'm sitting up the rest of the day. And that's such a small and seemingly insignificant thing. But then you start to add on different things. And it's, it's, it's so easy to, you know, overwrite and think, well, dude, everybody does this. This is not a big deal. But as long as it's getting you somewhere, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, if, you know, as, as intensive an example as this sounds, but I've said this before, if you're having trouble getting out of bed, turn the TV on, turn it on for an hour. You know, it, it doesn't matter where you start. That's obviously an extreme example, but it's just like we're saying with fitness, you know, if you start with 10 pushups a day, you know, you can easily convince yourself that that's nothing and I'm not going to make any real progress or, but you're starting, you're starting the process. And right. Exactly. And I think too, like, it's a, a good way, like, uh, you know, whatever your big, big goal is break it down to what, how do you get there? You know? So like, maybe, you know, like you would think, Oh my God, if I could do a hundred pushups in a day or in a session, that would be like unbelievable. You know, I'd feel like Superman. Well, you can't do, you know, like 10 sets of 10. If you can't, you know, to get there, you have to be able to do five in a row, you know? So maybe that's your first goal, you know, like don't. And, uh, if you think about the long-term goal, it may be, um, overwhelming and discouraging if you, you know, cause first step, uh, towards that will make that long-term goal seem impossible. You know, if you're trying to lose a hundred pounds, you can't go, all right, well, I'm going to lose 20 pounds this month. Right. You know, like the first step to losing a hundred pounds is losing one pound, you know, like whatever it is, you know, if you've got a, a fitness goal, you know, if you want to run a marathon, nobody can run 26 miles unless they can run around the block, you right. know? So maybe that's your first goal. You know, and I mean, like anything, going back to the, you know, that age old saying of, you know, you can't learn to run before you can walk and you can't learn to walk before you can crawl, you know, and I think that that's um, everything in life kind of like applies to that. You know, you, can, you have the, the big term goal in mind, but break it down, like try to think like, okay, well, what's the first step towards getting there? You know, so like you were saying that if you're having a really bad day and I mean, it's not, you know, like I've obviously I'm human. I've had bad days and, you know, felt bad and been, you know, like uh, depressed and like a, you know, like a, a day to day type of level, you know, not like clinically, but you know, like if, if, you know, like your goal when you're like that is to have like a, a quote unquote normal day, you know, like you said, what would be the first step? Well, literally the first step is sitting up in bed. Yeah. Then it's getting out of bed, you know what I mean? Like whatever. And I mean, you can do that on, on any goal, like, um, Jacko Willink, who, uh, I don't know if you guys know, he's did, uh, he's got a podcast and he's written some phenomenal books yeah. and stuff. Uh, he was a former, uh, Navy SEAL team leader and he does a ton of motivational stuff and a ton of motivational stuff. If you, uh, YouTube or Google that guy, you'll find all kinds of awesome clips. And, uh, he's been doing stuff, um, last week, especially, I think maybe two weeks ago on his, uh, Instagram account about like how to make it through this current time when like you're stuck in your house and how to like kind of stay on track and still do things. So he said he like writes down his steps and uh, like, so step one was get out of bed. And he said, now that seems like maybe something that wouldn't need to be written down because it's so obvious that the first step of starting the day is getting out of bed. Now, and what he was saying was, uh, you know, like he was, taking it a little bit further where he's saying like, you know, what he means is don't sit there and hit snooze, you know, a uh, hundred times before you get out of bed. You know, as far as he's concerned, like you should be disciplined. So when your alarm goes off, you, that's the time you need to get up. So you're getting up and uh, you know, but it, it, it's that same concept of one step at a time. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, Jacko's like his whole thing is discipline equals freedom. You know, so I mean, it, it may be extreme for somebody who's like having difficulty getting out of bed. You probably can't just listen to a Jacko video and jump up and go start doing stuff. But like even somebody as um, tough and disciplined as he is, his step one was get out of bed. Right. Well, you know, and, so I mean, and, and just as simple as be, possible. Right. Well, and I was going to say like, 
for to make it not to make it simplistic or whatever, but I I mean, in a way, change is change, change is probably more behavior based than results based. I don't know if that's you guys agree with that, but you know, I think if you're, if I think the I think the action is much more. I think it's more important to focus on action than results. So I would agree. Right, you know, and to to have um, something laid out like you know TJ was saying to even if it's something very simple as long as you're doing it and you're starting to change your you know behavior and the way you do things um the results will come you know um if you're just looking for results because you you know you did something for a couple weeks and okay well you have to make a long-term change you know and behavior uh the way you do things is much more important right um uh what the hell is i lost my train of thought but <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. What the hell well, am I going to say next? If you remember, <laughs> just cut in, but I wanted to say, uh, just as Go a, ahead, yeah. just as a real world example, like we're talking about with, uh, change and first steps. And actually that was, a, I'm glad you said that, you know, uh, I agree. I think action is more important than results. Don't focus on, to me, if I focus on the results that I'm really caught up in, like Tulio said, the end goal, and maybe I'm thinking way, you make, you make this huge picture in your head and it's, it seems insurmountable. But to me, the more you can habituate the action or yeah, the, I guess the action of simply taking action. Um, an example for me is, you know, now that I'm working with dogs previous to this, I had a, a regular office job. I, I was, it got to be very miserable. Um, my boss at the company who I was very close to had passed away. It was a difficult time in general. So I decided that I was going to make uh, a career change and I didn't exactly know what. And I ended up just by happenstance, I decided to take a dog walking job just to take a step. And I was like, Oh, well that seems interesting. And then that led to me really enjoying it, which then led to me working in a dog daycare. And then, which is now leading me to where I'm getting into a training program and will within the next year have a, a certification in dog training. So it, you know, that's, I think that's kind of, it's a pretty big example in terms of changing a career isn't easy by any means. But I think again, when you're able to get that mindset of, all right, well, let me just take action. Things do at least seemingly start to fall into place. Yeah, definitely. And I think that a good way to, to look at things too, that um, is that the time will pass anyway, you know? So like if you have a giant goal uh, that may take a year or, you know, five years or something, you know, as you just said, in terms of like a career change, you know, to be like wherever you would want to be in a different, a, a different path uh, is that the time's going to pass anyway. You know, so if you're thinking, oh, well, you know, I can't, I'm not going to bother trying to lose a hundred pounds. It's going to take like a year or two. Well, a year or two is going to happen no matter what, you know, so you can either be two years down the road and have achieved that goal or be right on the cusp of achieving it. Or you could still be where you are or even maybe further behind from where you are, you know? So I think that that's um, something that I try to remind myself of too. And I think that a lot of people should try to you know, like think of that, you know, like when something seems giant and overwhelming and the time just seems unrealistic and something you don't want to deal with, like, you know, just remind yourself that that time's going to pass anyway. So, you know, you can either try to, you, you can spend the time slowly working towards whatever that, you know, what today seems giant and unachievable goal is, or, you know, you cannot. And then two years down the road, you can either be at the goal or close to it or just regret not doing it for the last two years. Right. And I think uh, the big thing too to remember is don't, don't let setbacks discourage you, especially discourage you to the point of just quitting. Setbacks happen and they could be major setbacks. You know, maybe you started a new company, you felt this was the place you were going to be indefinitely and you get laid off. It's a very devastating thing for any human because you're going to get discouraged. You, you felt really good about this, but realize that, one example I, I've given before is it's like in music when we'd be playing a song and, you know, Mike, I'm sure you can relate to this. When we were young, especially if I messed up, like it would just, I, the rest of the song would be terrible, but I had to learn to play through the mistake. All right. You mess up that part. Don't even acknowledge it. Just keep going. Right. No, but you can't, it's not like the whole band's going to stop and start over, you know? And uh, 
that also goes back to maintaining a sense of calm. I mean, we've all been there, you know, uh, on stage and, and you mess up a part or whatever, but it might not feel good. But at the end of the day, it feels good to know that, you know, things, things you got through it and you're going to have time to work on it and get better. And I think, you know, we all have different experiences, you know, some better than others, but you, you can't allow, you can't allow um, too much negativity to creep in to the point where it does discourage you enough to, to want to quit. You gotta, you gotta just look at it and say how, you know, how can I get better from this? And um, you know, for a long time we played together and I mean, our evolution over the years was crazy, you know, um, from, from being, I mean, you started off playing guitar before bass, right? Yeah. You, yeah. You, you taught me a lot of guitar initially. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I remember you were getting so good at bass and your, your, um, your brother, Brian, obviously was a huge influence on us, but I remember you were getting so good at bass that I was like, I want to learn bass. <laughs> you know, like, so, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy how, you know, when you see others around you too, doing well, it, it rubs off. Yeah. Well, and like you said too, just even, uh, to me, similarly, you know, seeing your skills on guitar or even, um, you know, Ryan, our drummer, when I'd see you guys overcome a hurdle and grow, I was like, oh, man, I want to get to the next level, too. And so, like you say, with without us verbally telling the other person, like, oh, you know, you should sharpen your skills, too. Like, we didn't have to say that. We just were inspired by each other's progress and motivated by this, the virtue of being around one another to get better. And those are the kind of people I think you need to surround yourself with in life. Yeah. It helps, yeah. It helps a lot to have people you trust and, and, and uh, that's obviously transfers in music or martial arts or, or anything in general, but you know, be, being sometimes that you, you know, let's say like earlier, like you said, you have, could have social anxiety, whatever, then, you know, going back to doing things on your own and taking small steps that can open you up a little bit, you know? No. Absolutely. Definitely. And I think it's important too for people to uh, oh, remember that uh, 99% of the time you're your own worst critic. You know, like, like you guys were oh, talking yeah. about when you would play, if you know, like you guys would mess something up. I've been, I, you know, used to go to a bunch of your shows and you know, one of you would be like, Oh my God, I screwed this part up during whatever. And I literally wouldn't even notice. And I knew your songs, you know what I mean? Like I could sing along with the songs and stuff. And a lot of times, the other people wouldn't even know that, you know, like you quote unquote screwed it up, you know, like it wouldn't, a, a normal person wouldn't think that you screwed anything up, you know, so like you're always your own worst critic. And even if it's in terms of, uh, you know, uh, whatever it is, a fitness goal, a diet goal, you know, like, like you submit, you can't beat yourself up if you, if you do screw up a little bit here or there, you know, maybe you're not on track or at the pace that you would originally planned you need to remind yourself that you're still doing it. You know, like any progress, slow progress is better than no progress at all. You know, yeah. um, for some of my, and I mean, that's some of my viewers, end. real quick, just to, and then keep going. No, yeah, some, no of, some of my viewers, uh, slow motion is better than no motion. That's where I took it from right there. All right, go on. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it, it can be on, on, on any mm -hmm. scale. Um, I'm thinking of, uh, the, the movie um, Lone Survivor. I don't know. I don't think they put it in the movie, but I know I I saw uh, listened to a bunch of podcasts that the, the guy was on um, around the time that the movie came out. I don't know if you, if you guys are familiar with the movie. It's a guy that um, he was a soldier in Afghanistan, and he was the only one that had survived an attack and had uh, he escaped. He was able to escape. He had been shot several times and was able to make it to. Um, to a village. I think some villagers had found him and picked him up and saved him. But he was in such bad shape that he, his way of going on was he would stick his rifle out and like try to draw a line in the dirt and drag himself to that line. And then he would do it again when he got there. And that was literally how he did that. He traveled, he cr dragged himself along for miles. I can't remember how long it was by just reaching his gun out and drawing a little, a, a line in the dirt. And that was his goal was to get the length of his rifle. And he just did that over and over and over again until he was able to, you know, get himself to 
um, I, I don't know if he even knew where he was going, but he just knew he couldn't stay still, right. you know? And so, I mean, like you can do that with like just about anything, you know, like little tiny goals. And, you know, like I said, you have a giant goal in mind, um, but you can take the smallest step and any kind of step is, is still getting you closer to that. And if you take a misstep and, you know, like maybe you don't take the step the one day, you can still look back to where you started from and realize that even if you're not as close to the end goal as you'd like to be, you're further from the starting line than you were. Yeah. No, right. and, uh, and go on, Mike. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I mean, just to, you know, to kind of expand on being your worst critic, I mean, it's so easy to to recognize the negative aspects. Oh, I didn't do, I didn't get to this part today or I didn't get this, but you do have to, it is important to remind yourself of positive things, maybe the small progress you made. And, um, you know, I just know that that is prevalent in a lot of people's minds. They, they want to think, oh man, I didn't do this. I didn't do that. But, but it is important to remember the positive things that you got done or any little progress that you made. Remind yourself of that. Yeah. And I think uh, that's directly tying into what I was about to say. And it's, it's in, it's a difficult mind shift if that's a word to make, but like I said, in uh, pursuing martial arts and there being, you know, three schools that I tried and I ended up not really sticking with one of those schools, it was uh, for Kempo, just for some background, which is a mixture of karate and Southern Kung Fu styles. Anyway, um, so I had gone there initially, there were three trial lessons and then you would start the actual, at the actual school as a student. And I did the three trial lessons again. This was earlier in my journey and I, I, I didn't end up joining. About a year or so later, I did join. And one of the reasons I did it, which made it a little bit easier on me, was there were, you got one one-on-one -on -one lesson with the instructor and then there were three other days that you could go to the gym as a group. So I would just do, it was only a half hour even, but I would do the one-on-ones and I did that for like three months. And there was a part of me initially that's like, oh man, you know, you got to get to a group class, blah, blah, blah. But I would just keep reminding myself like, yes, I want to get to a group class, but at least doing this is better than sitting at home and telling myself, man, you need to do this, man, you need to do this and not doing anything. So like yeah, definitely. definitely maintaining those, uh, be aware of how you're measuring things and be aware that what we might perceive as insignificant, trivial, or even failure is usually not so in that we are like we're, we've all said, uh, you know, you're, you, you are your own worst critic, but I know that you guys have things to do today as well. So I think we'll stop here for now, but as always, thank you guys for coming on. It was a really mm -hmm. good discussion, I feel. And, uh, you know, certainly to all my viewers, I'm sure you will see both of these faces again, whether it's another roundtable discussion or me one-on-one -on -one with them. But everyone, stay strong during this time. And until later, my friends, be well.